All right, so in two, two, no, two, one, sorry, we talked about inductive reasoning, which is like a pattern. And in two, three, we're going to talk about deductive reasoning, okay? And there's two different laws we're going to talk about today. Sorry. Law of detachment, law of syllogism, okay? All of it's still continuing with our logic. It's still continuing with our if-then statements. So deductive reasoning, instead of using a pattern or an assumption, it uses facts, definitions, and accepted properties, and then the laws of logic to form a logical argument. So this is based on fact. This is based on things that you already know to be true or properties, or laws of logic, which we're going to talk about too today. That is deductive. Okay, so the first law of logic we're going to talk about is called the law of detachment. And you're already using the law of detachment, you just didn't know you were using it. Okay, the law of detachment says that if I have a true if-then statement, and then the hypothesis of that statement is true, then I can lead to believe that the conclusion will also be true. So if it's a true statement and the hypothesis happens, then you would believe or lead, to, lead, lead you to believe that the conclusion will also happen. So if on every Friday you eat pizza and you wake up and it's Friday morning, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to eat pizza, okay? That's the law of detachment. And we talked about, remember, we talked about P and Q. P is your if, Q is your then, or your hypothesis and your conclusion. And the arrow is the order it goes in. So this is saying the if, if the if whatever P is happens, then Q will happen. So that, that arrow is leading you to the then, kind of. Okay, the second law of logic is law of syllogism. And it's used when the conclusion of one of the statements is the hypothesis of another. So you're basically taking two if-then statements and blending them together. So if it's Friday, then I go to the movies. And if I go to the movies, then I'll eat popcorn. Then your conclusion is if it's Friday, I'll eat popcorn. So you basically take out the part that overlaps or the part that repeats. Taking out the middleman. All right, so this says if the measure of angle R falls between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, then angle R is obtuse. And then you're given that the measure of angle R is 155 degrees. Using the law of detachment, what statement can be made? Good. That angle R is obtuse. So the if part was if an angle falls between 90 degrees and 180 and the then part of the, hype, the conclusion is angle R is obtuse. And then you got given a statement that angle R is in between 90 or 180 because it's 155. So it, you lead to believe that angle R is obtuse. That's the law of detachment. Questions on that one? Okay, if Janelle gets a job, then she can afford a car. If Janelle can afford a car, then she'll drive to school. Using the law of syllogism, what statement can you make? Or else? Then? Skip the confort a car, because that's what gets repeated, right? So the law of syllogism, you want to blend the if of the first with the then of the second. Oh, it's more than yeah. Okay. So go. If she gets a job, then she can there it is. If she gets a job, so if Janelle, who spells it with an E, which is weird, but we're going with it. If Janelle gets a job, then she will drive to school. So the if she gets a job, then she can afford a car. If she can afford a car, then she will drive to school. So there's going to be one part of each statement that repeats, and that's the part you remove when you use the law of syllogism. Okay, state the law of logic, which means either law of detachment or law of syllogism, 
That's illustrated. If you get an A or better on your math test, then you can go to the movies. If you go to the movies, then you can watch your favorite actor. So then, if you get an A or better on your math test, you can watch your favorite actor. Which law is that? Good. Who can give me an example of law of detachment that you would use from this first? What would have been a law of detachment? So how do you know you would get an A or better on your math test? What could your score be? 90. 90 or above. So you got a 91 on your test. So what would you determine from that? Say again. That's the if. So what can you assume from that? You can go to the movies. So that would be your law of detachment. Does that make sense? Okay. State the law of logic that is illustrated. If x is greater than 12, then x plus 9 is greater than 20. And the value of x is 14, so x plus 9 is greater than 20. This would be law of detachment. Okay. So the if was x is greater than 12, and then x was 14, which means it's greater than 12. So you assume the same conclusion. So I'm going to go back to the beginning on this, because let's talk about the difference between inductive or deductive. So it says decide whether inductive or deductive reasoning is used to reach the conclusion and explain your reasoning. What is inductive? Other way around, right? Inductive means... A pattern. Deductive means facts. Do you understand the difference between them? Yeah? So if each time she kicks the ball up in the air, it returns to the ground, what's happening there? It goes up, it comes back down. It goes up, it comes back down. It goes up, it comes back down. It's a, it's, no. So if it said gravity would bring a ball that is kicked up in the air down, now we're talking about facts. This is you're watching something happen and it kicks it up and she comes back down and it kicks it up and it comes back down. What happens there? Pattern. It's a pattern. And so this is inductive reasoning. Does that make sense? You're not using the law of gravity. There's no mention of the law of gravity here. So this is inductive. And it's because it's a pattern. So if in there it said gravity causes a ball that is kicked up in the air to come back down, now it will be based on fact. So B says all reptiles are cold-blooded. Parrots are not cold-blooded. Sue's pet parrot is not a reptile. Deductive. So cold-blooded is an actual fact, right? All reptiles are cold-blooded. Okay, and it's based on fact. So anything using definitions, you know, like, you know, an acute angle is less than 90 degrees. Angle A is 40 degrees. So angle A is acute. That's what? That's deductive. Okay. Does that make sense? All right. 